Imam al-Hajjah Hospital consists of 10 departments which provide all the necessary medical treatments for the residents of Karbala and the millions of pilgrims that arrive here. Some of the major departments are number 1. The Department of Cardiovascular Medicine. This department will provide services on the prevention, diagnosis and treatment of cardiac diseases affecting the patient population. The second department is the Department of Ophthalmology. This department will be responsible for diagnosis and treatment of eye diseases in both adults and children and it will be equipped with the latest international recognized and advanced medical instruments and technologies that help in early diagnosis of eye diseases and provide suitable treatments. The third department is the internal medicine department which deals with diagnosis, treatment and prevention of wide spectrum of general diseases to complex illnesses. The fourth department is the pharmacy which will be staffed with pharmacists, pharmacy techs and others who will monitor both inpatient and outpatient systems. These four departments are only four out of ten departments of the hospital which provide all the necessary medical treatments for all of its patients. From the inception of this project, the founders vision and those who were in charge were to have a hospital that is basically categorically different from the rest of the hospitals in two ways. Number one, in providing the quality of care <clears throat> that we intend to provide to our patients. We don't deny that public hospitals do a great role here in this country and they are for free, free of charge. But unfortunately, many of the patients who come to the hospitals receive medical attention. When they leave, they leave with a collateral damage, with, with different kind of sicknesses. The reason is that because those hospitals the public hospitals are not in compliance with the international rules and regulations. The hygiene system is not very well implemented. The administering drugs and taking the right procedures to administer, for example, a, a surgery or a minor surgery is not well kept in, 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 in the process. There are deviations. What we have intended in this hospital, inshallah, upon the opening, we will be adhering to those rules that are made internationally and supervised internationally. So when we compete, we will compete based on the quality of healthcare that we will provide to, to the patients. So the patient, when he leaves or she leaves, she doesn't have to take so many antibiotics with them and doesn't have to come and visit the doctor so often. The treatment will be very precise, efficient, and clean. So once they receive this, they leave, inshallah, healed for good. One of the core values of the project of Imam al-Hujja hospital is that to um, elevate the public awareness of the healthcare issues. Today, the focus in the international medicine is not to do complicated surgeries, basically call it intervention, surgical intervention. Rather, it is a preventive maintenance, meaning that you give a single tablet, a single pill, that would save the life of this person in advance. And instead of leaving him to suffer until he gets it in, in a, to a critical position that you have to administer um, a complicated surgery. Now the focus of the international medicines is that focus on a preventive medicine. Take a very small, simple procedures in advance in order to secure his life later on. This is what we will be doing. How does this work when we elevate the public awareness of the health related issues? For example, how they um, combat contagious diseases by simple procedures how they wash their hands, how they use the soap, for example, when they uh, use the bathroom or when they eat, how they should eat, how they should, you know, keep themselves clean from, from very simple, uh, you know, diseases. That would save them in advance. Or keeping their diets, knowing what to eat and what not to eat, what kind of food they should avoid, 
what kind of food they should emphasize on. That will help them in the future. Those will be done when you raise the level of the, the, of the awareness of the public. When you have workshops, for, for example, semin, sem, seminars, or you go door to door and talk to the neighborhoods to, um, on, on a one-to-one -one face. This kind of um, methodology, inshallah, will be provided at the hospital project upon commissioning. I can touch upon a few of them. Number one, the at-risk population that will receive medical attention, inshallah, we will have a very compassionate and caring medical care that we will provide. Many hospitals and many doctors focus on the illness itself. They want to eliminate the sickness, irregard of whom they are talking to. They don't look at the person's face. They only care about the medicine. Therefore, when you visit a doctor, you see he prescribes five or six medical treatments and, 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 and medications. The reason is that he's not looking at the whole status of the patient. Rather, he just hears the symptoms and based on hearing these symptoms, he's just writing medication. Basically shooting in the dark. One hoping that one of those shots will hit the illness and, and cure him. The, 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 the way of approaching this will be completely different in, the, in, in, in our hospital, inshallah. We will be dealing with the patients themselves. Number one, you need to know the patient's history. You need to build an archive for the patient. You, know to, you need to know what kind of diet habits he does, what kind of a problem his family has, medical problems. Did, did, for example, his, his father or his mother or somebody in the household have caught cancer before or not. So you need to construct an image or a blueprint of this patient before you look into the symptoms of the problem, of, 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 of the sickness. Building an archive of every single patient is, is essential in combating the illnesses of the um, of the, of the um, person. Therefore, one of our core values is that we will deal with the patients themselves, not with the illness itself. So this is number one. Second, inshallah, when we provide this um, uh, medical treatment, definitely the hospital is non for profit. It's a charity hospital. Therefore, our cost to the patient will be very symbolic, something that he can afford without having the burden of leaving his family and country and going somewhere else to receive the same treatment. That's number two. Second, inshallah, we will be strictly compliant with the very stringent international laws and regulations. And inshallah, we will be accredited and endorsed and certified by um, you know, uh, international organizations, health organizations, that can recognize the practice that has been done on the premise of the hospital. And going back again to lowering the cost of the, um, of, for, on the patients. When you look at the health budget in Iraq, it's a multi-billion dollar. In 2011, the, the health budget was $2.5 five billion dollars uh, in 2015 probably it's almost three billion dollars when you look at the province of Karbala who receives uh, millions of pilgrims throughout the year you will see it is ranking number 14 in the country only one 135 million dollars per year is allocated to the province of Karbala definitely with this much money, the, the government cannot advance the medical care, cannot advance the health sector in this country. There, were, there is always suffering on the population as well as the visitors who will come and visit the, the, the province and, and the holy city of, of Karbala. Therefore, inshallah, we will do a program which is all based on non-profit um, methods and, and, and charitable method. Inshallah, those who do not have, who cannot afford, 
they will receive sponsors to receive their medical treatment. So these are basically the core values that you know the hospital inshallah will be keeping in mind when we open the hospital. at uh, Imam Al-Hujjah Hospital in Karbala, Iraq. And specifically, we are in a room given to us to be as a lab. A lab to test the hospital network that we designed from scratch. Uh, I designed it, my background in, elect in electrical and electronic engineering, as well as I have a master's degree from George Washington University, 1919 computer science. I got to know, say, Jafar and other people, and then I've been recruited. So all what you see here, it's our design. I designed the network. The hospital infrastructure or the network, it's in two parts. One is hardware, that's what you see here, all working, all being tested. And the second one is the software. So thank God we order the equipment that you see and we fix them ourselves, and we test them. What you see right now is not all to the data center. Every floor will have one or two of these cabinets behind me. For example, this is floor four. We have all what they call drop points. The drop point is where we're gonna have connection. All being numbered, all being named, and so on. So that if we have any problem, we will immediately know where we're going. That's four, five, seven, six, and seven. So we have seven floors plus the ground. That's eight floors. That's eight floors. So we did all that. That's gonna go upstairs. And then we'll have in the data center, these two cabins, one main cabin, and the second one as a backup. And you have all the switches, the controllers, and so on. This is the hardware. And again, my background is, as I said, I have a master's degree in computer science. So we know what we are doing. The second portion of it is the software. What we call HIMS. Stand for Hospital Information Management Systems. That's the brain of the hospital. That's where everything being connected. Doctors could pull patients' record. Nurses could see patients' record. As well as, of course, you have your management and pharmacy and so on. And your staff, you could monitor. But our target is the patient, since it's the hospital. The information will be very confidential, meaning if a doctor, he or she, wrote something for this specific patient. Nobody will alter that. You can add to it. You can add anything you want. But you cannot delete what you wrote, even a second. You could, you, while you are typing, you could go back and delete something. But when you hit submit, it's gone. So from, from this point, confidentiality is very important to us. This is, this, is, this, is, this is information, you know, I mean, we're talking about lives, we're talking about people. So we have to have it secure. Why we did this? We did this is for a lot of reasons. One, again, as I told you, the security of the record. The second one is what we call telemedicine. What telemedicine? Telemedicine is two parts. Is telecommunication and information management or information technology mixed together. So what we're going to have by mixing these two together? The communication we do need. For what? For example, I've been admitted to this hospital. 
and I have whatever after the doc doctor diagnosed this. And suppose I want to travel to any country, meaning to America, to Europe, to Iran, to Lebanon, name it. The hospital will be able to send all my information, all my records, the history, if I have illness before, images, MRI, CT scan, name it. They could send it without nobody alter, so that other physician will, could see and diagnose. That's the beauty. So we really, we don't have any more distance between us. Telemedicine is very important. The telemedicine is in two parts, the telecommunication as well as the information technology, of which the HIMS become under the information technology, meaning we could have the patient's record, we could have his illness, back history from temperature to name it, to surgery, anything. That information could be shared with other physicians. We could send it anywhere in the world, as long as we have the net and as long as they could access the net. That's one. Second thing which is very important, we have some physicians all over, all over the world. For example, in America. And we have some cases. And we need some consultation. We need some more advice. We could show them that. We could send them the report. We could send them how we did the surgery and so on. So that they could feed us with valuable information. That I believe never happened here, especially in Iraq. I, I believe this is the first time something unique been designed and done in this manner. That, of course, is gonna, gonna, gonna save us a lot of money and time. Money, there is no paper. I'm hoping, and this is my goal, to have a paperless hospital. Your record will be displayed. Your information could be sent to you, and so on. So that's what we achieve. In that, we're gonna save a lot of money. No films, no x-ray films, and so on. All is going to be digitalized. One. Second is the time. Time is very important. Time is money. So we're not going to have time. No, we're not going to spend time writing this report, dealing with paper, dealing with that. No. The doctor, he or she could write the diagnose, send it. Send where? Could be to the lab, to the MRI, anywhere. And that's it. It's done. We'll, we'll come downstairs to our server, our storage area, for safekeeping. And again, as I mentioned that, because it's very important, I have to mention them, nobody, nobody will, will, will change it. Nobody. And that's our goal, and that's, alhamdulillah, I believe we did about 80, 85% of this structure. And I just came from Dubai, try to negotiate with companies in this field, in HIMS, and hopefully we're going to have a company to come and provide to us the HIMS, inshallah. Thank mm -hmm. you.